a countdown video two weeks in a row. I'm so excited. Let's get to it. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown video for you. Second week in a row, just turned out that way with what I had been reading. And I do have more than one book today, which is also incredible. If you're not familiar with the thousand and one book countdown, I will leave a card up here for you where I go and talk about the original video or the original idea and all of the details about it. But basically I'm reading books off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list. And that's just a passion project of mine that I have been working on for a number of years. Uh, I really like reading from lists. Lists make me happy. I love checking things off of a list. And so I have found some really great books off of this. And I have found some books that were like, why in the world did I just read that? But I'm okay with that because this is my my fun project. Um, I'm kind of a bucket list project. So I hope you consider giving me a subscribe and sticking with me and seeing how far I make it on this big project. For today, I will go ahead and put Put up the numbers which are I have to look down again 885 which is my master number left and 44 which is my number left for 2023 every year at the beginning of the year I go and pre-select 52 books and then those are the 52 books I try and focus on in that year with the idea of maybe possibly getting it down to zero I have not been successful so far and I'm not making good progress this year so <laughs> with 44 but I, um, I still I'm really really having a lot of fun. The first book that I read this week is Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. I did this as a buddy read with Gemma from Gemma Books and Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Unfortunately they haven't been able to quite finish the book yet but I'm going to go ahead and give my my review for it or my discussion about Crime and Punishment. This book was originally published in 1866 and from what I understand is loosely based off of a real person. I do actually also have the book The Sinner and the Saint which is telling the story uh, from a nonfiction perspective. Dostoevsky actually has six or seven books on the thousand and one book list and I have read one other one which is the Brothers Karamazov. I read that in December. So this is my second. There are three more at least three or four more to read by Dostoevsky. Uh, so yeah it's good that I'm getting these off of my off of my list. I'm very happy about that. Um, this book was is broken into six different parts and each one kind of ends on like this cliffhangery part. I didn't look to see if maybe it was published as a serial because it certainly has that feel to it. Like the very end of a part there'll be someone new introduced that you're like, ooh, who's that? Or ooh, what happened? All of those different parts. But this largely focuses on a young man named Rodion, Rodion uh, Raskolnikov, and he is a student or former student who is uh, not doing well financially. And he makes some very, very weird and bad decisions that impact the whole of the story. And I don't really want to go into what the crime is, and I don't really want to go into like that part of it. His character, I actually thought was really well done. He has a lot of questions about why he committed his crime, about what was the purpose of it, he just how he interacts with people. When we were with him and with the crime or part of the crime, I loved that part of this book. It was so incredible. Just the the way it was told and what he was going through and what he was thinking and what other people were thinking, thinking about him, thinking about who could have possibly committed this crime. And I loved those parts. However, <laughs> man, it does to ask he, Boy, Dostoevsky likes to take his time uh, and there were a number of sections in this book that were tough to make it through. There was I think one complete part that it didn't pick up until the very end of that part. Uh, it's just like why is this character here and why are we going through this long multiple page uh, monologue from this character and this character, sorry, the book also the way it's formatted is not with a lot of paragraph breaks. So you get in these long, drawn out conversations and it's just text, page after page of text. And it made it so hard. I actually ended up not reading it from this physical copy. I read it as an ebook because it was a lot easier for me to consume that way. Then when it gets to about 
part four of the six parts, it really starts to pick up and kind of getting to the end of it, it was so many different pieces were going on and I liked it so much better the last two parts than I liked the middle of the book. There were parts in part one and part two, a part one that I really liked, part two was rough, part three, rough in places, four, five, and six, it really started to pick up again. So, but yeah, if you read this book, just know you're going to be in some long, long sections with no paragraph breaks, with a character doing a monologue that you're like, who are you? And uh, that was what part was really hard. But I really found the whole conversation that he was having internally and then with other people, I thought that was really interesting. Also, like, he's not a very good criminal <laughs> is the other part. Um, I also interestingly thought that I don't think you needed the epilogue in this book. I loved how part six ended and then there was this epilogue and I was kind of like, do I need the epilogue? I don't know that I personally needed the epilogue. So I'm really curious if you've read this book, if you thought the same thing, if you thought the same thing about you know, the different uh, kind of parts of it. I'm not going into a deep dive on the characters or more of the plot because this is a book I feel like you could easily spoil for someone just overall. And so it is worth picking up. I liked it considerably more than I like the Brothers Karamazov is what I would say. It has encouraged me uh, when reading other <laughs> Dostoevsky books. I have to, I have The Idiot, um, Demons, and Notes from the Underground. Notes from the Underground is actually also on the list for this year. So, but Crime and Punishment with this book, I do get to go from, I have to look because I don't remember, 885 to 884, but it's not on my 2023 list. I, I don't remember why I didn't put it on my 2023 list. I think I put notes from the underground on it and then Alice reached out and said, hey, are we still reading that? And I was like, oh, yes, I do want to still read it and I want to read it with a buddy. <laughs> um, so it got put on uh, this year, but I didn't actually list it on my 2023 list. So that number will stay at 44. That was the more successful of the two books that I read. Um, I ended up with some time this week uh, to, where I was not starting a buddy read and picked up another book, needed an audiobook, so started a book that I have tried to read three times, um, and it is Amsterdam by Ian McEwan. This particular book, I started it in May, in March, I think. It is on my... I started in March and I was having trouble following the characters. I didn't know, okay, is this just my frame of mind? I'm trying to read too many things at once. So I put it aside. I picked it up as an audiobook, couldn't get into it. Picked it up as a physical book, couldn't get into it. Uh, didn't understand the characters, didn't understand what was going on with it. So it's like, okay, I'm just going to put it aside. So I picked it up again, started all the way back at the beginning. I was about halfway through. It's only about a 166 page book. So I started all the way back at the beginning and it features two characters really at the start are Clive and Vernon who have been friends for a very long time and they are at a friend's funeral, Molly. Molly was in a relationship with one or both of them at one point, not sure. Uh, and she was currently in at the time of her death married or in a relationship with someone named George and that is about as much clarity as I can kind of give you about the book because it is so all over the place there's not anything to really grab onto. Clive is a composer and he goes on these tangents of composing and just building out this symphony. And then you have Vernon who is a newspaper person and he's trying to publish this thing on the prime minister and this expose on the prime minister. And Clive has something to do with it and George has something to do with it. And it's just like, why? I mean, I thought this would be something different, I guess, something more about molly and her relationship with them and what they all did how they were all intertwined and she comes in a little bit but not very much and they are just kind of off on these weird tangents that kind of sometimes relate but more often you're in one person's head and that's it and then you're on to the next person's head it's like i just I just didn't get it i didn't get the point of it i didn't get the point of these characters I ended up giving it like one and a half stars. <laughs> it is my least favorite Ian, McE Ian McEwen novel I have read so far. Ian McEwen actually has eight books on the countdown and I have read five. Um, so I only have a couple more left and I was just surprised by how much 
I really did not like this book. I was surprised that just how it was how it was put together. Um, there's some great reviews at it, including one from Sean the Book Maniac that made me chuckle uh, because spoiler he also did not like this book um and yeah it was a disappointment without a doubt it was a disappointment and it does kind of lean back to when i first started reading it and couldn't get into it it's like i thought it was me and then when i read it again and spent much more dedicated time with it i was still like okay no this wasn't me this was this book um I just, yeah, I just couldn't get the point of it and was very, very disappointed. Yeah, so far my worst read of 2023 and the worst out of the 800 so far. Uh, so yeah, that's not good. That's not a good start for this. I mean, that's not great. But with this book, I do get to go from 884 to 883. And thankfully it was on my 2023 list, which is why I keep trying to read it. So that number gets to go from 44 to 43. I mean, okay, we're I'm I'm focused. <laughs> I'm happy with this progress this week. I think it was an amazing week. A big thank you to Gemma and Alice for the buddy read, the attempted buddy read. Uh, I look forward to future buddy reads with you. Uh, what am I working on? It's kind of a surprise as well. I needed an audio book uh, because I go out on walks and I like to listen to something and I had to drive to my parents on Thursday. So I wanted something to listen to then and I picked up A Tale of Love and Darkness by Amos Oz. Now, this is the second time I've tried to read this book as well. I had originally picked it up in 2021 and didn't get past like chapter 17. And what I realized this time is this is not a novel. <laughs> this is a memoir, essentially. It is nonfiction. And trying to read a nonfiction book as if it was a novel just really doesn't work. So I'm getting quite a bit more out of this now and I'm enjoying it quite a bit more. As you can see, there's a great bookmark in here. I was able to listen to some of it yesterday, uh, which was great. Uh, and I want to get back and read more of it now. But yeah, I've started this one. Not really planned for April for a read, but it is the book that was calling to me. So I have started this one and thankfully it is on the 2023 list. So I'd like to try and have one of those going at all times, but I don't know if that's going to be possible or not. Um, We'll see. But that is the book that I am currently working on off of the 1001 book list. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. But two books. Yay! Um, definitely in the 880s. I still feel like I'm making great progress. I'm still really enjoying uh, my progress, even though Ian McEwen's book didn't work for me. I almost feel like I almost feel like I want to go back and read some of the other ones and see what I think about them because one of them I had given three stars two of them I didn't give any rating to one I'm debating whether I actually read I may take it out of the red list because in one place I said it's red and the other place I say it's not red so now I don't know <laughs> so but let me know what you think in the comments uh, if you've read either one of these books what do you th what did you think of them love to hear your thoughts but as always like comment and subscribe and until next time bye